Upper gastrointestinal bleeding refers to bleeding that originates proximal to the ligament of trites. Its annual incidence in Western countries ranges from 39 to 172 cases per 100,000 individuals. Factors that increase the risk of morbidity and mortality from upper gastrointestinal bleeding include advancing age, pre-existing organ dysfunction, and recurrent episodes of hemorrhage. Common Causes of Upper Gastrointestinal Bleeding Peptic ulcer disease remains the leading cause of upper gastrointestinal bleeding, despite its declining prevalence over the past two decades. This decline is attributed to better recognition and management of underscore helicobacter pylori underscore infections, as well as awareness of risk factors like aspirin, nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, and smoking. Erosive gastritis and esophagitis result from inflammation and erosion of the stomach or esophageal lining. Contributing factors include alcohol use, salicylates, nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, infections, radiation, and stress from severe illnesses such as sepsis or respiratory failure. Esophageal and gastric varices occur as a consequence of portal hypertension, with alcoholic liver disease being the most common underlying cause in the United States. Mallory-Weiss syndrome refers to tears at the gastroesophageal junction, typically caused by forceful vomiting. Dulafoy lesions are abnormally large arteries that protrude through the submucosa, commonly found along the lesser curvature of the stomach near the gastroesophageal junction. Other less common causes include arteriovenous malformations, malignancies, and aortoenteric fistulas. The latter often presents as a herald bleed, characterized by hematemesis or hematochesia, which may temporarily resolve. Diagnosis of Upper Gastrointestinal Bleeding Patient History A comprehensive history includes inquiry about hematemesis, coffee ground emesis, and melina, as these symptoms suggest an upper gastrointestinal source of bleeding. Vomiting followed by hematemesis may indicate a Mallory-Weiss tear. Prior episodes of bleeding, past interventions, and a history of an aortic graft are relevant details to identify possible aortoenteric fistulas. It is also critical to review medication use, such as salicylates, glucocorticoids, nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, anticoagulants, and alcohol intake. Clinicians should consider mimics of gastrointestinal bleeding, such as ingested iron, bismuth, red dye-containing medications, or foods like beets. Symptoms like hypotension, tachycardia, angina, syncope, weakness, confusion, or cardiac arrest may indicate significant underlying hemorrhage. Physical examination. The most reliable diagnostic clue in the emergency department is direct inspection of the vomitus. Vital signs often reveal hypotension or tachycardia, and more subtle indicators include reduced pulse pressure or tachypnea. Cool, clammy skin may signal shock, while signs like spider angiomas, jaundice, and gynecomastia suggest underlying liver disease. A complete abdominal and rectal examination is essential to identify tenderness, masses, ascites, or the presence and nature of blood. Laboratory testing. In patients with significant bleeding, blood type and cross-matching are critical. Additional tests include complete blood count, coagulation studies, liver function tests, and lactate levels, which can indicate illness severity. Electrocardiography is necessary for patients with coronary artery disease, and elevated lactate levels predict in-hospital mortality. Imaging studies, including barium contrast, are contraindicated in active bleeding. Nasogastric lavage. While a negative nasogastric aspirate does not rule out upper gastrointestinal bleeding, visual inspection of aspirate remains a key diagnostic step. If bright red blood or clots are observed, gentle lavage with room temperature water may help. Risk stratification. Clinical judgment is required for risk stratification. Predictors of higher risk include advanced age, comorbid conditions, visible red blood in hematemesis or nasogastric aspirate, and hemodynamic instability. 
Treatment of upper gastrointestinal bleeding. Initial stabilization. Patients in hemorrhagic shock require emergent resuscitation, including placement of two large bore intravenous lines, administration of blood products, and in some cases, airway management. Blood transfusions. Transfusions can be life saving, particularly when guided by restrictive thresholds. For most patients, a hemoglobin level below 7 grams per deciliter is an indication for transfusion, while thresholds are higher for older adults or those with significant comorbidities. Pharmacologic management. Proton pump inhibitors are indicated for non-variceal bleeding associated with peptic ulcer disease. High-dose intravenous omeprazole is commonly used. Somatostatin analogs like octreotide can reduce bleeding from varices by inhibiting gastric acid secretion and promoting splanchnic vasoconstriction. Prophylactic antibiotics, such as ceftriaxone, are recommended for patients with cirrhosis to lower the risk of infections and related complications. Endoscopy and other interventions. Endoscopy is the diagnostic and therapeutic method of choice. The timing of endoscopy depends on the patient's stability, with unstable cases requiring intervention within 6 to 24 hours. Balloon tamponade may be used temporarily for life-threatening variceal bleeding until definitive care is provided. Endoscopic variceal ligation, EVL, also known as endoscopic band ligation, is a procedure that uses elastic bands to treat enlarged veins in the esophagus. It's used to treat acute bleeding, prevent bleeding in high-risk patients, and eradicate residual varices after the first bleeding episode. Surgery may be necessary for patients who do not respond to medical and endoscopic treatments. Disposition and follow-up. Patients with significant bleeding should be admitted to an intensive care unit for close monitoring and early endoscopy. Low-risk individuals might be managed on an outpatient basis with close follow-up. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.